Hello students, this is the second part of my lecture on uh, basic concepts of photography and videography. Uh, I'm sorry I had to stop the video because uh, I had to go. So I'll begin uh, this part of lecture from where I left. All right, so uh, in previous video, I was talking about extreme long shot and here you can see that uh, it's called extreme long shot because the purpose here is to provide uh, the details of the background. Let's compare it with long shot. So I'll uh, go to the previous screen and then see this screen. You can see quite visibly extreme long shot is different from long shot in the sense that extreme long shot provides more details in terms of background as compared to uh, long shot. Uh, then there is medium long shot and you can see this is from the top of a person's head to just above or below knee. And here, uh, this uh, image does not give you as much details in terms of background as the extreme long shot and long shot uh, do. Um, all right, next is medium shot. So um, it's above or below uh, the waistline and it says it's common for, for group shots. So just imagine some of the group shots that you might have taken uh, uh, like during a birthday party or a wedding and, uh, or a wedding anniversary uh, or a wedding party or like uh, these sort of gatherings. So people usually take uh, medium shots uh, when they are trying to do group photographs. Um, next is over the shoulder shot. All right, now this is usually used when people are engaged in conversation or in dialogue. So just imagine the um, different shots that you might have seen in movies or in drama serials. So you, you see uh, two persons here, one person is in foreground and the other person is in the background. So oh, in over the shoulder shot, essentially the camera is focusing on the person who is in the background. But the purpose to show the person who is in the foreground uh, is that, okay, the person on which camera is focusing is actually uh, engaged in a dialogue with a person who is standing or sitting in front of him. So this is pretty popular in uh, usually in uh, productions like, like I said, dramas and movies and uh, commonly it's, it is known as OTS, over the shoulder shot. All right, let's talk about depth of field. Now in this image, you see actually there are three persons. There are, there's a person, um, in foreground and there is another person in the background but actually the camera is focusing on the person who is in the middle uh, the person who is in the middle actually is in focus so depth of field is the distance like the closest distance and the farthest distance uh, from the point where camera is focusing so uh, I just wanted you to be familiar with the concept uh, I really don't think that you will be using this concept in your photography assignment, but I think it is it, it, it is important for you to know what is uh, what the ter terminology actually is. Um, usually, great depth of field uh, is used in situations wherein um, the the photographer wants to focus. Uh, on a really, really, really large area. As you see here, uh, this is the picture of Grand Canyon, which is absolutely majestic as the picture itself tells. So uh, that is why great depth of, I mean, well, it is not quite obvious that what is the focus here, uh, but you can see that the purpose of using great depth of field is to actually cover the overall, the, like the ambience uh, and I think this photograph this picture of Grand Canyon is a perfect case in point here all right next uh, we will talk about medium close-up you all are familiar with the term close-up I am sure you have used close-ups in many pictures several times uh, there are some subtle differences in different close-ups that we will discuss here so this is the one 
that you see here on this screen is medium close up, which is from top of person's head to just below chest. So as I think uh, they have given examples here, this is usually used in uh, news bulletins. So many times you see newscasters in median close-ups when you are watching news on TV. This is a perfect example of a close-up. And I'm sure um, you, have, you might have taken several close-ups of your friends or your family members. You might even have several close-ups of your own. So um, you can see the description says that the top, it, is, it covers a person from the top of the person's head to below shoulders. Remember, little bit of your shoulders are also included in a close-up. Well, this is a very bad example of a close-up as the title here says, and you can see like the image here on the screen, uh, it seems as though it's a floating head. For that reason, I was saying that you should remember whenever you are taking a close-up, you should actually uh, focus on little bit shoulders as well. All right, this is uh, an example of extreme close-up, which is also known as ECU or XCU. Uh, Usually extreme close-ups you see on TV, uh, in, uh, like in different videos or in photographs, whenever the photographer or the videographer wants to focus on uh, some parts, some specific parts of face or some, some specific parts of body, it can be hand or, or foot or anything. All right, so now this is a, this is an example of bad framing. You see, uh, the in this picture, um, so it it seems as though the the legs of the person who is being photographed here are amputated. So I think you should be very careful about uh, this when you are working on your picture assignment. So I'll stop here, and um, in the next part of this video we are going to talk about some camera shots. Uh, those camera shots are not necessarily related to photography, but they are used uh, frequently in videography. We'll talk about that uh, in our next video. Thank you.